The ball from the Bob Martinez Center on the campus of the University of Tampa. The Spartans get ready to take on the Rollins Tars. Spartans come in ranked eighth in the country. They are 13 and one on the season, and Rollins comes in one and five in conference play, six and seven overall on the season. Hi everybody, Jack Ike, along with two-time Hall of Famer De Carlo DeVoe. Happy we, New Year! <laughs> as we get ready for the start of this Sunshine State Conference basketball game, we will pause for a few seconds for the national anthem and then get back with the starting lineups. home game of the year 2023 Spartans did play on Wednesday night went up to St. Leo in a, a gritty victory for Tampa actually had to battle back in that game and pulled out a nine-point victory as I said the Spartans come in at five and one in the conference 13 and one overall they have the best overall record on the season for the conference but trail Eckerd in the conference standings. Eckert is 7-0. and The Spartans and Nova Southeastern are 5-1. and Both Nova Southeastern and Tampa are 13-1 and on the year, and Eckert is at 12-2. and Starting lineups for today's game for the Rollins Tars, who come in with the 1-5 and conference record. Kaimora Westerfield, number one, and she is a senior from Dallas, Texas. Erin Lee, number two. She is a 5'7 junior from Brandon, Florida. Number 25 is Lucy Lean. Lean is a 5'9 junior from Cumberland, Maine. Number 24 is Emily Dagbatsi, and she is a 5'11 sophomore from Spring, Texas. And number 44 for the Rollins Tars. And that's a number change, too. That is, got to find the right number. She, changes her numbers on occasion and she's listed as 44 on the court but that is Alia Irizarry Perez a sophomore from Cabo Rojo Puerto Rico <coughs> so listed on our program as 55 she is wearing 44 out on the court longtime coach Ed Wil Glenn Wilkes Jr. leading the Tars and assistant coaches are Courtney Berry Eddie Cole and Samija Butler Spartans will start number one, Maya Gusto, a junior from Naples, Florida. Number five is Audrey Ramsey, a 5'7 junior from Boca Raton, Florida. Number 15, Sarah Jones, a 5'5 junior from Mason, Ohio, a transfer in from Embry Riddle College. Number 24, Malia Sullivan, the four year starter for the Spartans, a 5'11 senior from Bartow, Florida. And Sydney Kinn, a transfer in from Findlay, University of Findlay. She is a 6'3 senior from Cary, Ohio. Spartans wearing the white. Rollins Tar is wearing the blue with gold trim. And they have the ball to start. And that is Lean down into the corner. There's Lean and Lee. That is Lean with the ball. And that is Lee with the ball. They go inside to Irizarry Perez. Turn around, has a block. 
Ramsey with the rebound for Tampa. And Ken, Jack, as you have mentioned, is starting right off where she left off at these past two games. They, had, they dropped one to Palm Beach Atlantic here at home, but she's had two monster games since then. She was a big reason they were able to come back and beat St. Leo. She's going to fall out of bounds. Tries to save it. Does save it. Seven on the shot clock. Ramsey for three. Tipped away and rebounded by the Tars. Quickly up court. That is Lee. Long three on the way. Good. That's what Rollins was always known for. Men and women. Um, great athletic program. Great teams. Good competitors. Classy school. Tracy McGrady attended Rollins when he really? was with the Magic. Yep. Wow. Sullivan, good. Three to two, Rollins. Dugbatsi hit that three a few moments ago. Lee, whistle away from the ball, and a foul is going to be called on Rollins. 24, Dugbatsi, positioning away from the ball. Got to stay still on those screens. Ramsey brings it up court for Tampa. Man-to-man -man defense. That's Kin. Free throw line extended inside Sullivan. They look to double teamer, give it up, and she just banks it in. Down there, she's almost reminiscent of a female Charles Barkley. Spartans take the 4-3 lead. Three on the way from Lean. Tracked down by Sullivan to Gusto. Eight minutes left, first quarter. Sullivan inside to Kin. Going to post up the little 10 foot jumper, no good. Sarah Jones gets the long rebound. Gusto drives the lane off the glass, bounces around home. The juice is loose. My <laughs> Gusto, as our teammates call her. <laughs> it's Gusto, but she can call her juice, yeah. and she will respond. <laughs> Westerfield to the corner. Irizarry Perez knocks down a three. Ties this game up. Rollins so far, two baskets, both threes. That's the game now. The, the centers shoot threes like Jokic in the NBA. I mean, back then, that, that was a, a rarity yeah. to have a big man be able to shoot. The well, it forces you to guard him all the way out to the line. Yep. Ken tries to tip it. Taken away. Quickly up court is Lee. To the corner to Westerfield. Up top. They swing it. Doug Botsy tries to put the move on Sullivan. She goes up off the glass and in. Rollins up 8-6. Nice left hand. Gusto comes off a pick from Kin. Feeds Sullivan. Free throw line jumper, good, and Malia Sullivan is off and running in this game. Yeah, she's like, if you're not going to guard me, then I'll just shoot it in. <laughs> Spartans, the eighth-ranked team in the nation. Which makes, which it means every game when you're ranked, you have a target on your back when you're playing against an unranked opponent. Bounces away. Good block out by Gusto. Just allowed Ramsey to go pick the ball up off the floor. 8-8 eight, eight tie. Off a pick. Back out to Sullivan. She's going to try to drive. Not quite up high enough. Here is Ari Perez, the other end. Out of bounds. Tampa ball. She, Perez took one dribble too many in, in, in leading that break. You, you, you want to Good ball handling post player, but still got to play your role. You know, I'll be honest with you. If you look at the stats, the stats certainly favor Tampa, but as you, you know, you've got to play the game no matter what. Right. But Tampa shooting in the 40% range for field goals. Ken misses that one. Whereas Rollins is shooting only about 35% from the floor. Oh. 
Back out, drive, travel. running start. That'll be a travel. Tampa shoots 51% from the floor, whereas it's 35% for Rollins. Rollins shoots 28% on three-pointers. The Spartans are shooting 38 and a half. Gusto step back three. Tell you this, statistically, like you said, it, it always, it, it tells a tale, but yeah. <laughs> as you said, the game still has to be played. It's and that's almost like the old Al Pacino movie, Any Given Sunday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I just babbled all those stats, and it's an 8-8 game. <laughs> <laughs> that's the fun. Five on the shot clock. Good. Westerfield knocks it down. Her first shot. Three three-pointers so far for the Tars. You, you know, the one thing with being ranked and playing in conference, your conference opponents, they're not, they're familiar with you. They're, they're not as afraid of you. Yeah. Because they know you. Eleanor Marcheski into the Spartan lineup. Giving Malia Sullivan a break. Gusto finds Ken, lays it up and in. That was nice. I thought she was going to shoot it. She <laughs> faked me out. Well, fortunately, Ken has learned with Maya Gusto, keep the head on a swivel. Yep. <laughs> on the drive, outside to Westerfield. Both teams shooting 50% right now. Pass, Irisari Perez drives on Kin off the glass, misdirected the shot, and Gusto with the board. Finds Ramsey. Jones back to Ramsey. Looking to go inside to Kin. Pretty good defense. Gusto, a little stutter step, feeds Kin. Up and, and in, one. she'll go to the line. Assist in the basket. So back to back possessions where Gusto found Kin. And with 3.23 to go in the first quarter, this will be the under five timeout. We'll step out. It is Tampa 12, Rollins 11 on TampaSpartans.tv. College sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And, and for college sports. sports. In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Twelve eleven, Tampa on top. Three twenty-three to go, first quarter. Sydney Kin will shoot one, trying for the three-point play. Right now, both teams shooting fifty percent. Rollins two of four, Tampa three of six, but Rollins two of three from the three-point line. Kin hits that. Up top, Westerfield. On the drive, Lee, jumper, rolls around, Gusto rebound. Down low to Kin, she's got a little room. Up off the glass, won't fall. She, got a, she had a little bump right there. It looks from the Rollins player, Sylvia Lasarte. Asarte just into the lineup. She is a 6'2 senior from Spain. Long three off the back of the rim. Kin 
Picks it up off the floor, hands off to Gusto. Ramsey. Marcheski finds Kin. Harlow action. No, good ball control. Turns around, hits the jumper. Very soft, feathery touch. Spartans up four. Biggest lead of the game for either team. Rollins had a 3-0 lead, hitting the first shot of the game. That's lean. Dugbatsi back out. This is Westerfield, three on the shot clock. Blocked by Kin, out of bounds. And they're saying one second left on the shot she, clock. She's like, um, like a Tim Duncan slash <laughs> Elijah one female clone because she's, she's so li like lighter on her feet and, yep. and, and quick. Oh, man, she's a joy to watch, offensively and defensively. One second to shoot. That's time to catch and shoot. And they do. And they hit. Clutch shot there by Lasarte. And it makes it a 15-13 game. Minute and a half to go first quarter. Yeah, that, that's a winning play right there. Marcheski inside to Alani. Alani Gallagher now in the lineup for Tampa. She lays it up just a little bit too far left. Gallagher with a homecoming of sorts on Wednesday night. She transferred to Tampa from St. Leo, and the Spartans played up at St. Leo. Lasarte. And rebound. Gallagher tried to take it away, and Lasarte, I think, picks up another foul. Strong rebound by the New York native. Under a minute to go in the first quarter. Lee comes back in the lineup, and also coming in is number 10, Isabella Prada for the Rollins Tar. She's a sophomore from Lutz, Florida, local product. This, is, this, this looks like um, the UT version of small ball right now. Yeah, it definitely is. As Gallagher in, hands to Sullivan, and she scores. Yep. Sullivan back in the lineup. She's got six. She's been very efficient to start this game. That is Emily McIntosh, number five, also new in the lineup. Glenn Wilkes not afraid to go deep on his roster. Shot short, goes out of bounds, and they say it's Tampa ball with 21 seconds to go in the quarter. Shot clock is dark. And quickly in is Marcheski for Sullivan. And here we go. Ramsey trots across the timeline. 15 seconds in the quarter. Gallagher looks to set a pick for Ramsey. Comes off the pick. Under 10. Stops. 10-foot jumper. Knocks it down. Three seconds in the quarter. They're not going to get a shot off because they're not going to inbound the ball. We've reached the end of the first quarter, and at the end of 10 minutes, it is Tampa 19 and Rollins 13. We'll be back for quarter number two on TampaSpartans.tv. Champions know how to seize opportunities. When they see moments of greatness unfold right before their eyes, they push as hard as they possibly can, and then they push harder. Because the heart of a champion never settles, never quits, and never stops giving its all. We are champions. We are Division II. We go big, we give it everything we've got, and we win. On the field, on our campuses, in our communities, for our causes, in our careers. We rise to become champions in everything we do. We are Division II and there are no limits here. We make our time count. We set our own path. We become champions on our terms. It's time to up your game. 
Because we're here to play and learn. But most importantly, we're here to discover ourselves, our vision, our heart, our drive, to achieve every goal we aim for. Because we want to be champions at the highest level, life. At Division II, the opportunities are here. Are you ready? Spartans inbounding for the second quarter. They now have a six-point lead, biggest of the game. Ramsey with the ball for Tampa to Gusto. Back to Ramsey. Now on the left side. Inside to Sullivan. Little ball fake. Just kind of muscles her way inside. And Sullivan already with 10 points on the day. Yeah, Sullivan looks like she's been doing some miking drills. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know why I say that, Jack. Yeah. Her touch is impeccable right now. 21-13. Malia, 5 of 7 from the floor. On the drive, Erickson just into the lineup. A long three from Alfieri. And she misses. And here comes Tampa. Gusto, Ramsey, doesn't take the shot. Free throw line extended, good. Spartans are on fire. That's almost the identical spot she hit from earlier. Yep, and Glenn Wilkes needs a timeout as the lead has ballooned to 10. 9.05 to go in the quarter. We'll step out and be right back after this. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Not to. I, I live with It is now 10. Spartans are on an 8-0 run at this point. And as I was just mentioning to you during the break, Jack, I, I love to see how Audrey Ramsey has come out, and she's imp she's more implemented in the offense from the start. And I mean, she's she's a very unselfish player, great distributor, but it, but her when she's clicking offensively, it makes this team almost unbeatable. Yeah. Now you got to figure out which one of the five to guard because they can all hurt you. And you can't stop them all. <laughs> yeah. and they all do it in different ways. Right. <laughs> It's like an old kung fu movie I, I watched. You may have seen it, The Five Deadly Venoms. Yeah. <laughs> the one person who has not shot today who will probably get in on the game action soon is Sarah Jones. All of a sudden, she just goes on spurts. Right. Spartans by 10. Swing it to Eric, to Ali. Down in the corner to, er to McIntosh. That's Erickson. 10 now on the shot clock. Alfieri. Jumper. Good. McIntosh with a left-handed jumper. Inside the arc, 23-15. As I told you, Jack, lefties have great form. Well, yeah, they all do. <laughs> <laughs> Sullivan. And wouldn't go. Good defense. That's, that's, that's what they say. You can't teach height. Yes. Back-to-back -back buckets. McIntosh knocks down a three this time. And she's come up with the last five points and have the lead. It's a five-point lead now. Yeah, nice arc, beautiful rotation. She held her follow-through. It was a good shot. Lobbing it inside to Sullivan. A bounce and a foul. I think that may be the third on Lasarte. It is, it looks like the second on Lasarte. It's not her first. I'm pretty sure it's her second. Yes. Shooting foul. So Sullivan to the line. She's done all her damage from the floor. And the 80% free throw shooter knocks one down. Low arcing, but very accurate jump shot. Yep. 
Hits them both. She's got 12. She's got half the points for Tampa. It's funny with Coach Jesse's rotation, there's no drop-off in, 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 in play at all. It's great recruitment. Sullivan averaging 14 and a half on the season and is just about there in 12 minutes. Point a minute right now. How's that for efficiency? <laughs> <laughs> Long three. Banks, no good. Rebound, though. And they oh, come wow. back and hit. And that is McIntosh knocking down another shot. And the 10-point lead is down to a four-point lead thanks to McIntosh coming off the bench, having eight points since the quarter started. She's three for three. Yep. That's Foul called underneath. Right now she has the, the Vinnie Johnson Microwave Award. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Instant offense. Sydney Kinn back in the lineup for Malia Sullivan now. First free throw by Gusto is good. 71% free throw shooter on the year. Averages 10 and a half a game. She now has four points. Erickson brings it up court. Top of the key. Prada to Erickson. Irisari Perez. Lobs it inside a little too Awkward a pass, and the Spartans re, uh, take it away. Yeah, great great reaction on the deflection from Ken. She got her hands up in the passing lane. Gusto comes off the pick. Gallagher looks at one near the three-point line. Not that deep, but missed it anyway. McIntosh. I think Audrey Ramsey may have learned to get out there. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll be Tampa's ball. By the way, after this game at about 4 o'clock, men's basketball as the Spartans men take on the Rollins men. The Rollins men just filing into the gym. Gallagher looks at another one. This one won't go. Prada backs it out to Erickson. McIntosh guarded by Ramsey. Running the weave back up top to Erickson. Nine on the shot clock. Irisari Perez looks to go in on Kin. Free throw line jumper. No good. Tampa rebounds. That's Kin with the board. Rebound number two for her. Gusto has the po her pocket pick. McIntosh causing trouble at both ends of the floor. Yes, On the drive, has. Erickson bounces it inside. Gusto saw the pass coming, got in the lane, and knocked it out of bounds. Yeah, McIntosh has made a great impact off the Rollins Tars bench. Marcheski Sullivan back in the lineup for Tampa. Gallagher and Jones out. Halfway through the second quarter. Erickson, top of the key. Coming off the pick. Oh, wow. Erickson knocks it down. I, I, I thought that was a not a good shot, but she made it anyway. They're back up to 50% shooting. At the end of the quarter, they had dropped down into the 30s, and that's when the Spartans took the big lead. And Sullivan with 14. She's got her average. Did it in 15 minutes. She came, she, she's playing like a lady possessed right now. I mean, making the right plays offensively, defensively. She's playing well. Sydney Kinn is the leading scorer on the team for Tampa. 
at 21 points a game. Oh, Gusto held her position, got hit in the mouth. And there's going to be a foul on Irizarry Perez. So Gusto paying the price for holding her spot. Yeah, I, that, that, that's, that's a big <laughs> sacrifice for the team. <laughs> She's tough, though. She has that jersey toughness. Lead is five, under four before halftime. Gusto. Oh, tried to find Kin. Let her a little too much. It goes out of bounds. I, I, I'd give some credit to Irizarry Perez because she kind of held Sydney up from sliding down. Top of the key. They swing it. That's Irizarry Perez facing Kin. Jumper on the way from Lean. No good. Ramsey the other way. Ramsey looking, finds Gusto. Sullivan, free throw line, knocks Whoa, it down. Nice step back. The snatch back crossover on the step back, nothing but net from the free throw line. 16 for Sullivan, 7 of 10 from the floor, 2 of 2 from the line. Wow. Yeah, she's a mid-range queen, shooting-wise. Inside to Irizarry Perez. Back outside. Prada, way long. Gusto the other way. Into Sullivan. Couldn't quite get that one over the rim, but it goes out of bounds. Tampa ball. Yeah, she's on a mission right now. Yeah, it seems this to be. Looks, looks like it's personal. <laughs> Well, she's from the Orlando area. I don't know right, if it Winter would be. Haven, but, uh, yep. Rollins is from there. Gusto, good. Ooh. Lead is back to 10 as Gusto knocks it down. She's got seven. Gusto with seven, Kin with seven, and Sullivan with 16. That was, though, just the first three-pointer for Tampa today. On the other side is we've got five, six already. And it's going to say seven. It didn't go. So the lead is back to 10. It was 23-13 was the first 10-point lead. It got cut to four. It's back to 10. Ramsey, and I think they maybe got a foul on Kin with the pick. It is. First foul on her. 145 until half. And as we wait for play to start, Jack, I just want to, um, you know, send out a, a special shout out to <laughs> some of the Hillsborough High School representatives <laughs> that are down there. They yeah. brought some of their players to watch this game. So thank you for supporting the community team. We love to see the youth teams, the, yep. the prep schools, the prep teams here. They probably have visions of coming here. I would if I were watching <laughs> right? this game. If I saw the quality of basketball here, I'd want to come here. Step back, jumper good. Doug Batsy, she's got seven. I think that's a two, yes. Doug Batsy, leading scorer with seven. thought we had McIntosh for eight at one point, but they've got her back to five. Thought she knocked down a couple threes. Long three again. This time Doug Batsy with a little heat check there. Yeah, she looks like she has the green light. Aaron Antosh comes in with 50 seconds to go. Sit Kin down. Doesn't pick up any fouls. And Aaron, as, as we noticed, um, she's been a model of hard work. I mean, she stays, watches the men's game, and yep. then she shoots afterwards. Yeah, we saw her after the Palm Beach Atlantic game. Yep. Out top to Sullivan. 
Inside to Aaron. Little turnaround, good. Right on That's cue. That's what you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she's in here working after games. Yep. She must have her earbuds in listening to the broadcast. <laughs> I think that'd be a novel thing to do. Thirteen seconds in the quarter. Spartans by ten. Good switch. Double. Irisari Perez off the glass. Too strong. Marcheski rebounds three seconds. Ramsey near half court. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I Just ripped out. In. <laughs> <laughs> We've reached halftime of a Suntime State Conference women's basketball game. It is 36-26 Tampa on top by ten. We'll come back and give you the stats just before the start of the second half. You're watching this game on TampaSpartans.tv. college sports there's light at the end of the tunnel a return to normal and all we love about sports you've instilled resilience focus and selflessness in us we've put those lessons to work we have found strength and unity in each other you continue to take us places we never imagined you bring out the best in us the one we look forward we see the light at the end of the tunnel we see a better world for all of us and, and for college, college sports, sports. Wayne State Medical School has been my dream medical school since I was five. Athletics are important, but so is service, so is research, so is becoming a better person. And we expect you to do well athletically, but don't forget the reason you're here, which is to give back to your community and to get good grades. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student-athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student-athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student-athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after-school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. In NCAA Division II, student-athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student-athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student-athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you.
Wayne State Medical School has been my dream medical school since I was five. Athletics are important, but so is service, so is research, so is becoming a better person. And we expect you to do well athletically, but don't forget the reason you're here, which is to give back to your community and to get good grades. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you.
And we've got about a minute to go until the start of the second half. Jack Ike to Carlo DeVoe with the game. Tampa leading Rollins 36-26. A look at the stats from the first half for Rollins. They are shooting 34.5% from the floor. Westerfield with three points. Doug Botsy with seven. Irizarry Perez, three. Erickson with three. McIntosh, eight. And Lasarte has two. They are six of 16 from deep, 37.5%, and have 14 rebounds and six assists. On the other side, Maya Gusto with seven for Tampa. Audrey Ramsey with four. Malia Sullivan leading the way for everybody. 16 points on 7 of 11 shooting in just 13 minutes of play. That's pretty efficient. Marcheski has not scored. Antosh with two. Kin with seven. And that's the scoring for Tampa. They're shooting 53.5%. 50% from threes, just one of two. And five of five from the free throw line. Second half underway. Rollins with the ball. Irizarry Perez facing Kin, so she just knocks the ball out of bounds. Ken with a heads up play. It, it just, you know, what it what it does is you gotta be aware of everything you do when you're around her offensively and defensively. They inbound it. Perez jump shot, free throw line, good. 36-28. Tampa Spartans, coached by Tom Jesse, assistant associate head coaches, Kaylin Mitrick, and the assistant coaches are Tommy Jones. And Elena D'Alfredo. Elena is still over in Spain, probably listening, even though it's about, I don't know, 10 at night over there. Inside to Sullivan, finds a cutting gusto. She backs it out, spins, turns around, hits. And uh, Elena, courtesy of Jack, if you're listening, feliz año y buenas noches. She said she's back mid-February, or mid, mid-January, I right. should say. In about a week. And by the way, next week, next Saturday, Eckerd and Tampa will clash. And that will be on the Spartans' home floor. Eckerd is unbeaten in the conference. One game ahead of Tampa in the standings. And ranked in the top ten in the nation. Yeah, that's going to be a clash of the Titans. Yes. Sullivan rattles in and out. Long three, back of the rim no good. Chasing it down is Gusto. One She's on got one. one on one. Does she try to do it? She finds Jones. Jones with a jumper, too long. That's Sarah Jones' first shot of the game. And the ball knocked out of bounds, or lost out of bounds, I should say. It'll be Tampa ball. Tampa right now, 51.6%. They're a 50% shooting team on the year anyway. So right around their average. Inside to Kin, off the glass, and she'll get the free throw. You know, I'm, I'm going to go on record. I'm not trying to give up any UT secrets, <laughs> but it's better to make Ken catch the ball with you behind her. <laughs> because if she catches the ball in motion and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're fronting, or playing three quarters, she catch, catches the ball with a full head steam to the basket. It's going to be a basket and a foul. Yeah, she just glides into the basket after right. that. Right. I mean, you. I mean, if you try, you want her to settle for an eight foot jump shot, or or, or, or make her make a move. Oh, you yeah. know, give 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 the help time to get there or yeah. something. But you, I mean, she's too good. She really yeah. is. There's a jumper, no good. Ken <laughs> takes the rebound. Tipped it to herself. Yep. That'll be rebound four. Spartans now by 13. Ramsey back out. Finds a cutting Sarah Jones. Won't go. I'll tell you this. If, if Spartans Ken, turning up the pace a little bit here. If Ken doesn't have some type of professional playing career, she has to coach or train something. Yeah. She has too much good knowledge and ability to not transfer it on the court post-college or into other young players. Air ball back out to Lee. She misses. Sullivan rips it away. Sullivan back to Ramsey. 
Ramsey came up with four quick points, a couple quick baskets midway through the half. Sullivan, too easy. <laughs> if you don't guard her out there, you're, they're playing her for the drive, but she's just going to step up and shoot it. You know, that's the second or third time you've said that today. <laughs> <laughs> they, they need their, their air buds in yeah. so, they can, <laughs> so they can hear me to know yeah. <laughs> that she can shoot the mid-range shot. <laughs> she has 18. Back out top. Doug Bozzi. She steps back for a three and airballed it. Per er Irisari Perez tried to save it. Goes out of bounds and the shot clock expired as well. Double-edged sword. <laughs> so Tampa has the ball and a 15-point lead with six minutes to go in the third quarter. Men's basketball coming up about 4 o'clock. Kin, there's that 10-foot jumper and she hits it. But did you see the, the, the reverse pivot, the inside-out pivot on the footwork and um, created space? The, the defensive player did not close the gap, so she just shot it. This Simple. is a 17-point lead now. Irisari Perez blocked by Kin. Got her own rebound back. Dugbatsi hits. That'll be 10 for her. The Rollins coach set the sub five straight players. Nice changing lines. Ramsey rattles one home, her sixth of the game. 16 point lead. Lee swings it to lean. Westerfield to lean. Good job by Gusto fighting through the pick. They go inside. Irisari Perez turn around. In, out, and out. Ramsey with the rebound. They don't stop her. She pulls up. Oh, won't fall. Kin with the rebound. Back out to Sullivan. She drives. Fade away in the lane. Crawls over. 20 for Sullivan. Glenn Wilkes wants a timeout. He's going to sub five. He wants to have a couple... Get a couple words in with the referee. And trying to plead his case here for a while. The lead is 17. And he's doing a little tutorial for the referee down there. <laughs> I'll tell you this. Um, I understand how it is with, you know, coaches dealing with officials. But with the 17-point deficit, that that's that's. A lot to overcome right yeah. now against the Spartans. This late, yes. Now, I'm a, you know I'm a Big Ten basketball fan, and I was watching Iowa men play Indiana men the other night. Indiana went up by 21, mm. and this was like only 10 minutes into the game. Fran McCaffrey, the Iowa head coach, just went ballistic, which he does two or three times a right. game anyway. <laughs> Referee signaled a technical. Iowa came back and won that game. I mean, wow. he just lit up the refs, lit up his team, and Iowa came back and won it late. <laughs> wow. And they, the, the broadcaster said, I think the point was, he wants his team to know, I'm fighting, you guys get out there True. and fight. True. Technicals can be very constructive. Aaron Antosh into the Spartan lineup. Also in is Eleanor Marcheski. Rollins with the ball, down 18 now, biggest deficit of the game. On the drive. Back outside to McIntosh, who came up with eight quick ones early in the game, and it kept, uh, kept the Tars in this game. She probably should have been in the game earlier this, this, this half because of her offensive prowess. Gusto to Jones, wide open, three, no. Erickson, guarded by Jones, bounces it over to McIntosh. Alfieri, 
Erickson. Weave up the top. Also now in the lineup is number 20, Fambro. Shot clock to six. Air ball on the way. Out of bounds to Tampa. And this is the, with 3.34 to go, the under five timeout. Tampa 49, Rollins 31. We'll take a break and come back for the final half of the quarter right after this. In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Teams coming back out on the floor. Tampa will inbound at the opposite end. Leading by 18. Ramsey trots across the timeline. Between the rings. Gusto. Back out and Tosh with a long jumper. No good. Marcheski fights for it. Gets the rebound. Long pass out to Gusto. She comes back to Ramsey. Ramsey inside to Antosh again. Backs around. Pivots. Loses the ball. Marcheski gets it back. Goes out of bounds. It'll be Tampa ball. Nine on the shot clock. Marcheski's been filling her role very well this season. I mean, it's, it's so well defined. Last year, a bit more of a guessing game for her, but. Five on the shot clock. They need to get it up in the air. Gusto, front of the rim. Sarah Jones tracks it down, got fouled. Fouled by Alfieri. That's only the second foul of the quarter. Both have been on Rollins. Tampa has no fouls this quarter. Long pass, Gusto. She's going to drive, kicks it back out. Antosh, 10-footer, good. Wow. Stop and pop like a well-oiled machine. You know, Antosh doesn't get a ton of playing time. Sometimes she won't even play in a game. But when she gets in, she typically makes something happen. Little shovel basket, no good. Gusto with the rebound. The lead is 20 now to Ramsey. She's going to go all the way. Can't get it up. And that'll be a foul on Sarah Jones. To, to piggyback on what you're saying, Jack, about Aaron Antosh, her pros outweigh her cons. Yes. No matter if she plays one minute, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, it's, it's always, she's always trying to do the right thing. And at 6'2", 6'3", she certainly keeps the Spartans with a tall lineup. Off the glass, no good. Antosh fights for it. Ramsey gets it. Two minutes to go, third quarter. Outside to Marcheski, inside to Antosh. Tries to come around the opposite side. That one goes out of bounds, and it'll be Rollins' ball. Yeah, she's just facing an opponent that's her height, yeah. so. Erickson into the front court. McIntosh. Swing it to the left side. They go inside to Lassart. She hooked. <laughs> and missed the shot. Bouncing out of bounds. That may be Rollins' ball. No, they give it to Tampa. Yeah, she, she hooked Antosh. Lasarte did. But I, I guess it's not a foul if you don't get caught. <laughs> <laughs> Gusto 
Antosh. Catch a cutting Marcheski. Off the glass, no good. Gets the rebound off the bottom of the backboard. Foul, though. And I think the foul's on Lassart. If so, it will be her third. Marcheski's first bucket, first point of the day. Makes it a 21-point game, minute 10 to go, third quarter. Hits them both. Adeline Kent coming into the game for Tampa. I don't know, we, we always appreciate these games when Adeline can get in for meaningful minutes with the uh, most of the starters still on the floor, and third quarter is definitely that case. Pass slipping through the hands of Fambro, and the turnover gives the ball to Tampa. Yeah, I think she's going to be one of the future premier backcourt players for the, for the Spartans. Though when you realize Gusto and Ramsey are both coming back, she's going to have to work for some playing time, oh, but no. they've been good with the three-man rotation. Antosh hitting again. Six tough. points for Aaron. Yeah, tough catch and tough adjustment on the catch and then a, a little soft turnaround jump shot. They, they've been working over this Christmas break, man. Yeah, I'm telling you. They yeah. weren't just home enjoying turkey and ham. <laughs> 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 Ramsey with the rebound. Ramsey now top. Believe it or not, Ramsey and Gusto are the two leading rebounders. Seven, wow. seven each. But wow. I bet you more than half of those have been balls bounding, long rebounds, hit the floor, and they just got over and picked it up. Kent? No. At the quarter. No good. We've reached the end of three quarters of play. Tampa 55, Rollins 31. We'll be back for the final 10 minutes after this on TampaSpartans.tv. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. college sports there's light at the end of the tunnel a return to normal and all we love about sports you've instilled resilience focus and selflessness in us we've put those lessons to work we've found strength and unity in each other you continue to take us places we never imagined you bring out the best in us the one we look forward we see the light at the end of the tunnel we see a better world for all of us and, and for college, college sports, sports. Fourth quarter, seconds away. Spartans pulling away in that quarter. A 19 to five edge in the quarter. And a 22 point lead. Spartans led 36-26 at halftime. It's now 55-31. Tampa averaging in the 70s, 75 points a game. And a little bit too far for Alani Gallagher. On the floor for Tampa to start the fourth is Alani Gallagher, Audrey Ramsey, Sarah Jones, Malia Sullivan, and Aaron Antosh. That's Irizarry Perez, Erickson, McIntosh with the ball. Doug Botts also in there. Jump shot. In and out. No good. That was by Doug Botts. Lean also in the lineup. 
for Rollins. Ramsey stops, finds Gallagher off the glass, too strong. Nice setup. Very nice setup. The drive, Erickson scoops it up, won't go though, and Sarah Jones to the other end. Ramsey, free throw line outside. Gallagher a little deeper, hits. Tried twice inside, a little bit too much obstruction in there. Hits the jumper <laughs> outside. 26 point lead for Tampa. Clear vision on the smooth shooting Alani Gallagher shot. Inside to Irizarry Perez. Faces up on Antosh, got position, uses her left hand and puts it in. Sends Ramsey to the, the hardwood. I know, to add insult to injury. <laughs> <laughs> Ramsey, free throw line, comes back out. Ramsey tries driving baseline. Goes all the way across the baseline. Finally goes into Antosh off the glass and in. She's just been having a good game off the bench for Tampa. That's her eighth point. Mm. Four of six from the floor. Very efficient. Very efficient. Perez drives too hard. Antosh has outscored Irizarry Perez 8-7. Irizarry Perez is the leading scorer for Rollins. Only player averaging in double digits. That'll be a foul on Erickson. Yeah, the, 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 the great difference in those two is that Antosh did hers in eight minutes, and Irizarry Perez has been on the floor for over 22. Yes. Eleanor Marcheski in, and Maya Gusto quickly checks in. Give Ramsey a little rest. 7-11 to go in the game. Ramsey Outside goes Jones. No. Ramsey goes out of the game with five assists and one turnover. And nice assist to turnover and ratio. And seven rebounds. Yep. Almost working on a triple-double. <laughs> <laughs> Marcheski shovels it over to Gusto. Got a one on three. That may not stop her. It does this time. <laughs> Oh, she's a brave heart. You she, know, freshman year, she might have done that. Antosh free throw line jumper. Won't go. Dogbats up the floor. McIntosh to lean back out. Erickson cutting off the glass. Rolls around. No good. Antosh fights for it. And that'll be a foul on Irizarry Perez, her third. What, one thing with Maya Gusto, the juice, as her teammates endearingly call her, her lateral quickness is so good offensively, but what we fail to recognize sometimes is how quick she is laterally on defense. Mm -hmm. I mean, she, she, she gets... with you. Yes, man, she does it so well. Nice pick by Antosh. And that time she looked like she was going to shoot, decided to pass, but... Nobody went with her. Marcheski tries for the steal or the tie-up. Didn't get it. Back outside to lean. Erickson for a long three. Front of the rim. Fighting for it is Irizarry Perez. Off the glass. No good. Spartans get it. Antosh quickly to Gusto. Irizarry Perez, she, she definitely... You know, throw, she she looks like a powerful player. She yeah. she definitely lets you know that she has that power. And Gusto, you were just talking about her quickness. That's 11 for Maya to go with seven rebounds and four assists. All defensive rebounds. Ooh, I thought Sarah uh, yeah, Jones she was going to. Yep. <laughs> she was waiting. The drive, the bucket, and a foul. 
That's like, I'm surprised Sarah hasn't done it as of yet. That's usually her MO, to get out into the passing yeah. lanes. And if she yet doesn't have shots falling, she, she's able to create from a steal. Adeline Kent back in. Sarah Cooper will sit. Her day may be done with a 26-point lead in five minutes plus to go. Rattles at home. 61-36. Kent out of Minnesota getting some extensive playing time here, the young freshman. Minnesota, home of the Vikings, the <laughs> Twins. The Wild. The Wild, and who am I missing? The Timberwolves. Timberwolves. Golden Gophers if you go high yep. uh, college. Yep. And then if you want to go entertainment. Um, Prince. Prince, yep. Rest May in, start rest and stop peace. with that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> the Twin Cities. Jumper, McIntosh won't go, but I think they got Gusto with a foul. I'll tell you this. McIntosh is an assassin <laughs> off the bench. And I and I mean that in a basketball way. Yeah. She 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 Wow, she's very efficient today. This is the under five timeout, four thirty four to go, sixty one thirty six Tampa. We'll be right back. In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. On the line is McIntosh. She's got eight points. She got those in a, uh, about a two-minute spurt huh. in the first half and kept Rollins close to Tampa. I think maybe even gave him a lead at one point. This game was tied at 13s. And then that's pretty much the last time it was close. Spartans went up 10. Rollins did cut it down to four. But then the Spartans got it back up to 10 and have been widening the gap ever since. It's a nice floor and nice gym to play in, but it's tough when you're, when you're facing the Spartans. Yeah. <laughs> McIntosh knocks the first one down. Second one, no. Rebound, Marcheski. She just brings it up court, hands off to Gusto. Four and a half to go in the game. Inside to Antosh. Boy, double figures for Aaron. She's got 10 on five of nine shooting. I'll tell you this, that, that shooting after games has, has really helped her. Yes. Outside, this is a new player, Swartz in. Knocks down a three. Swartz, a sophomore from Davidson, North Carolina. And then the T Spartans not able to inbound the ball, turning it over. No, it's a foul on Kent trying to get open to get the ball. So Rollins inbounds to Lee. Goes inside. Hook shot in the lane. Good foul on Antos. Got it into her. Heredia with a little right-handed hook, and she'll go to the line. Antosh picking up the foul, her first. Yeah. 
Maya Gusto is the only starter left on the floor. And she has the ball. She's the calming presence for the reserves. Spartans have used nine players today. Inside to Antosh, off the glass, and good. Wow. She's making it look easy. Uh, she, she really is. Yeah. She really is. She becomes the third, fourth Spartan, I should say, to reach double digits. It says six of ten shooting. I've only seen her miss one shot. Maybe I'm not watching <laughs> close enough. <laughs> and that time Lee couldn't get it to go in. Misdirected or redirected by Antosh. Three minutes left in the game. Gusto comes to the free throw line, gives it to Gallagher, who drains it. Gallagher with four and the lead back to 25. Mm. Biggest lead has been 28. Blocked by Marcheski, and she almost got the ball, but it went out of bounds off her hands after the block. Couple substitutions, couple players who don't often get in the lineup is number 42, and that's Bella Steidel. And let's get the other person for you. It is number three, and that is Stephanie Theodosakos. Stephanie is a sophomore from Boca Raton. Steidel is a junior from Mullica Hill, New Jersey. And Stephanie is definitely of Greek descent with that last <laughs> yeah. name. I, 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 but I asked her during practice, you know, not to assume or offend. Little scoop shot by McIntosh, no good, but rebounded. And put back in by Heredia. Full court press. Knocked out of bounds. Now you're seeing some youth on the floor because you've got Kent inbounding the ball. Theodosakos, a sophomore, also out there. They get it into Gallagher. Kent calls for the ball, gets it. And... Stop playing the backcourt. I'm not sure if they got a foul. They might have gotten a foul on uh, Lane. No, I don't think so. Yeah, that little miscue as far as I'm concerned. Or shot clock maybe didn't start. Get it over. Get it over. Yeah. Steidel to Gallagher. A cutting Kent off the glass and in. Nice. Nice. Nice backdoor play. Kent on the scoreboard. Long three, no good. Antosh rips it away. 12 points now, four rebounds. Kent up top and Tom Jesse calls a timeout just to make a substitution. That's all he wants to do. And he's able to get in Nettie Moreau, a freshman from St. Cloud, Florida, Gateway High School. And she has not played much at all this year. Yeah, St. Cloud, that's in the Kissimmee area, right? Mm -hmm. Orlando area. Matter of fact, I think this may her, be her first appearance of the season. I think she was injured a bit earlier. Yeah. Inside to Antosh, fading away. Why not? <laughs> 14 for Aaron. Uh, and you know, I'm going to go on a limb and say this, Jack. The presence of Sidney Kin has made Antosh better. It's made her better. Yeah. If this game were to go another five minutes, which it won't, Antosh could be the leading scorer. She has 14. Malia Sullivan's been sitting. She had 20 in 21 minutes of play. Wow. So efficient. Antosh efficient in the middle. 
Moreau to Kent. A couple names we don't often say. Moreau on the drive. First time playing, also probably one of the shortest players on the floor. What do they list her as? Shot clock down to nine. Five one. Five one. 40 seconds to go in the game. Ong three, off the rim, no good. Rebound blocked. Kent takes it away. Chased around, loses the ball. I think they might have slapped her hand, but they let it go. Yeah, these referees is trying to get in We got to get going. We got to. <laughs> and Mac Antosh with the rebound. 16 seconds to play. Moreau's just going to dribble it out. Men's game coming up at four, so hang with us. We'll have another game. Spartans with this win. Go to six and one in conference play, staying just one game behind Eckerd. 14 and one now on the season. Rollins falls to one and six, six and eight on the season. So Tampa picks up a 71 44 win. A quick recap of the scoring Westerfield, three points for Rollins. Doug Batts had 10. Lean, three. Irisari Perez with seven. Erickson had three. Swartz had three. Heredia had four. And Lassart had two. They shot only 26.6% for the game. They were up around 50 early, but the Spartans put the clamps on and took it away. 17 of 64. At one point, they were shooting about 60% from threes. They ended up 8 of 31, re really relying on half their shots coming from distance. And they were just uh, 2 of 4 from the free throw line. On the other side of the ball, Maya Gusto, one of a number of Spartans in double digits, 11 points. 4 of 5 from the floor and 7 rebounds and 5 assists. Sidney Kinn, 12 points. 5 of 9 from the floor, 2 of 2 from the free throw line. And 6 assists, uh, six, 5 I should say, 5 rebounds. Ramsey, Audrey Ramsey, six points, seven rebounds, five assists. Sarah Jones didn't score, though picked up a couple rebounds in the game. Malia Sullivan just on fire in the first half, 20 points, nine of 14 shooting, two of two from the free throw line, three rebounds. Also scoring is Adeline Kent on a backdoor layup, had two. Gallagher with four. Marcheski with two. And Aaron Antosh off the bench in 15 minutes of play. 14 points, 7 of 11 from the floor, 5 rebounds. Spartan shot 50.8% for the day. That's their average, 31 of 61. Only 1 of 7 from deep. They didn't rely on the deep ball because they got a lot of layups. And they were 8 of 8 from the free throw line. So as I mentioned, Tampa now 14 and 1 on the year, 6 and 1 in conference play. And we'll get ready for next Saturday. They do have a game coming up Wednesday, but next Saturday, big one right here against yes, Eckerd. Huge. All right, the Rollins men coming on the floor. Tampa men will be coming out soon. That game at 4. Come back and join us for that one. For DeCarlo DeVoe, Andre, and me, I'm Jack Ike saying thank